This is Heart Rhythm TV, I'm Juan Carlos Serpa. And today I'm joined by Dr. Tong Wong from London, one of the late break clinical trials for science and ablation. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Welcome, welcome here. We're going to talk to about... Be. It's great to have you here. We're going to talk about your work that is the long-term outcomes in long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation following catheter and thoracoscopic surgical ablation using continuous monitoring for three-year follow-up of the CASA AF randomized control trial. Can you tell me any detail? How was the, the idea of the projecting this kind of study, this kind of trial? So the, uh, uh, we have been spending a long time in, in progressing ablating atrial fibrillation. Despite all the advances over the past 30 years, we still find ablating long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation very challenging. This is the most difficult group of patients for us to treat, and the success rate tends to be not very encouraging. About 10 years ago, we came across the standalone thoracoscopic surgical ablation, which holds promised. Yeah. The result was very interesting. So we want to see whether this will give us a better outcome compared to the catheter ablation procedure. Okay. So therefore we designed this trial and we conducted this trial for a three-year period and after that we have now reported our three years clinical outcome. Yeah. So tell me about the ablation technique. You go for PVI, where were the, the sets of the ablation and how the thoracoscopic approach was done? Yes, we, know, we knew early on, very early on, pulmonary vein isolation alone it was a- is not effective in this very difficult population. Therefore, when we designed the trial, we say that every patient in either arm will have a predefined lesion set beyond pulmonary vein isolations. They will have standard pulmonary vein isolation. They will also have more than pulmonary vein isolation. The catheter group, we, have, we uh, isolate the posterior wall. We deploy two additional linear lesions. One is at the mitral valve isthmus and the other one at the cable tricuspid isthmus. And we make sure all the lines are blocked. In the surgical arm, beyond pulmonary vein isolation, we also isolate the posterior wall. At the time, there's a vogue to uh, deliver GP ablation, which we add to the lesion set, plus the uh, ligament martial uh, ligation, and also clip the appendage, yes, you, using the atrial clip device. So you have to do a lot of work with that logical group. Okay. And how was this control of the rhythm and the recurrence with this continuous monitoring? What were the, the factors and the characteristics to define the recurrence? Yes. Like time, the 30 seconds, the burden, yeah, what do you manage this? So first of all, we designed this trial to be a very rigorous scientifically in terms of the rhythm outcome. In terms of continuous monitoring using an implantable loop recorder, where the battery lasts for at least three years. So we have three years of continuous monitoring comparing the two groups. Initially, the primary endpoint we thought we uh, adhered to the guidelines of defining a rhythmia of 30 seconds or less okay. as a, a a complete abolishment of the atrial arrhythmia. And we put a second endpoint, rhythm endpoint, of more than 75% reduction of arrhythmia burdens. So these are the two arrhythmia clinical endpoints, efficacy endpoints. Do you have any information of the heart rate variation in this monitor, this continuous yeah. monitoring? That's a very good question. Heart rate variability, I think uh, that have a lot to uh, there's a, a lot of interest some years ago now, less so now. Uh, we are analyzing data, we have not, we don't have the data just yet. But we're gonna have it in the future, mm. it's gonna be a very important information. And how the results is gonna impact the clinical practice? Or can we use this information, it's gonna change the way we do the long-standing atrial fibrillation? 
first and foremost, <laughs> we have found there's no difference in cathode ablation versus surgical ablation. Secondly, both ablation modalities are actually quite effective in ablating long-standing persistent age of fibrillation. If you look at the 70, more than 75 rhythm reduction, which is more relevant clinical endpoint associated with improvement of quality of life, both ablation group at three years from a single procedure without anti erecting drugs, the, 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 the result is pretty encouraging. More than 55% of patients can maintain that uh, efficacy, which is excellent. So compared to uh, previous a, a study showing that the, the success is really, really low, with the advance of catheter ablation, of, of course, extensive lesion itself and surgical ablation, the outcome is pretty good. So I would say that these patients deserve to be offered such a blade procedure. When you come to choose between one and the other, we have to think about costs. Yeah. We have to think about hospital stay. We have to think about the invasiveness of the modalities. Maybe cat ablation is a first choice. Having said that, the minimal invasive surgical approach has moved on yeah. since we first uh, a designed the study. It's more a hybrid approach now than a standalone approach. And the hybrid ablation is showing some very interesting, favorable results. So we have to a, keep our mind open of the surgical techniques moving forward. Of course, from the catheter ablation standpoint, mm. PFA has come into the mainstream, hopefully in most centers, where it, w I will be very interesting to see the result of PFA in this very difficult population moving forward. I think we'll see. We don't know whether the PFA is gonna make an effect on these or gonna improve the results. It's more the data that we're gonna have to, yes. to capture on that. It's a complex situation and we have to manage and to invent complex procedures to try to improve the results and to have the better results for our patients. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much for your time and congratulations for your work. Thank you. And thank you all for watching.